My Lords, it's a great pleasure to follow the powerful speech of the noble Lord Lord Davies of Brixton, who's reminded us of how many ways our society is going back into Victorian times, with the level of inequality and the insecurity affecting so many people's lives. In the times the noble Lord was talking about, the spectre of the debtor's prison hung over so many people's, uh, so many families. Um, we are essentially back in that situation now, except of course the spectre now is of benefit sanctions that hit so many people utterly unjustifiably. And as the noble lord said, poverty is a feature of our system. It's not an individual failing. Now I wish to thank the Right Reverend Prelate for securing this terribly important debate. Uh, and uh, it is a grave pity that we don't see on the speaker's list any Tory backbenchers stepping up to speak to defend the policy, although I will note that one noble lady has joined us to listen to the debate. Uh, that's one person on the Tory benches listening to this debate. Perhaps they'll read it in Hansard later. Um, the fact is the Right Reverend Prelate talked about significant concerns in the manner of the Right Reverend Prelate's benches. Um, I would go much stronger than this, that. This is a disgusting piece of dog whistle politics, targeting the most vulnerable in our society, um, quite possibly having absolutely minimal effects, as the Right Reverend Prelate outlined, in terms of saving the government any money, very likely costing the government money, but spreading fear, attempting to activate some of the least desirable emotions in our society. Now, I am going to take a somewhat different approach to the noble Lord, Lord Davies and actually look at the real medical impacts of this. Um, the Right Reverend Prelate, I think, very clearly and cleverly set out the debate about talking about the impact on individual health and the health of the workforce. So my speech covers those two areas. Now, this led me to um, look in some detail at where uh, free prescriptions are available, to whom they're available. Now, there's a group of conditions. Cancer, diabetes, hypothyroidism and epilepsy are among them, um, for which there is automatically, if you have those conditions, you have the right to free prescriptions. Now, I would like to ask the noble lord, the minister, to put on the record um, that having those conditions, cancer, diabetes, hypothyroidism and epilepsy, um, even if you are affected by these rules, you will still get your cancer drugs you will still get your diabetes drugs, because I think it is incredibly important to put that on the record for people to understand. Um, but if we think about some of the conditions that aren't included in that, what I hope is an automatic um, exemption from prescription charges, mental health conditions are not on that list. As the Right Reverend Prelate highlighted, asthma uh, medications are not on that list. Of course, um, actually, free prescriptions for everybody would be the ideal situation for our society, both for the health of individuals and the health of our workforce. And I would just point out that that is Green Party policy and that indeed, of course, was where the NHS started. Another group of drugs taken by huge numbers of people, particularly older members of our society, are statins. Now, these are for dealing with um, high levels of cholesterol that can lead to cardiovascular disease, heart attacks and coronary heart disease, angina and stroke. Can the noble lord, the minister, confirm to me that statins, asthma medications, drugs, treatments for mental health conditions, will all of these be covered by these proposed sanctions? More than that, what about counselling? What is the will the NHS be continue to provide counselling to people who need it uh, if they are affected by these sanctions? I'm not sure I've seen that explained. Now, I want to put this in a broader context, and it is a great pity that none of the House's legal experts are taking part in this debate, uh, because um, if I go to the World Health Organization constitution, um, we are, of course, signed up as a member of the World Health Organization, the highest attainable standard of health is a fundamental right of every human being. More than that, I hope the noble Lord the Minister would acknowledge that the right to life is a fundamental human right. 
Now, if we're going to deny people statins, deny people asthma drugs, deny people mental health treatments, how does that square with the basic right to life, let alone the best attainable standard of health care we're signed up to through the WHO? Now, I want to turn to the, to the broader question, and perhaps this is areas where the, where the, uh, the noble, um, minister, noble Lord, the Minister in answering, might um, uh, agree with me a little. Um, the, your Lordship's House may be aware that the um, Office of National Statistics yesterday had emerged that under a new methodology, uh, a survey suggested that the current unemployment rate is actually 3.5%. Um, we have a labour market where the essential problem, we think of where there are all the shortages in our medical professionals, in our care workers, in our HGV drivers, in our construction workers. We actually need to start to think about what human time, energy and talents are. They are a scarce resource. They need to be nurtured. They need to be cultivated. They need to be looked after. They need care. We have a situation where we're going to have an early years debate later. I'll be joining in that as well. Um, we need to give people the best possible start in life so they are able to contribute best to our society. And I think the Right Reverend Prelate rather hinted at this. Actually, the best way we could look after people and ensure that they are fit to contribute to our society, which might be through paid work, it might be through voluntary work, it might be through caring for members of their family, all of those contributions, what people need is security. And that's why the Green Party alternative autumn statement said, let's live left the basic level of universal credit payment by £40 a week. And I would put it to the noble Lord, the Minister, that giving people payments that are unconditional, indeed the Green Party aspiration is for a universal basic income, if people have a universal secure payment that meets their needs, they can be healthy, they can contribute to society through paid work and other means, and will all be richer. Making people ill, forcing people into impossible situations, forcing people into fear, is a huge problem. And I'm going to circle back to the point um, I started with, um, with the noble Lord Lord Davies and going back to Victorian times. Poor health far too often is seen as an individual characteristic. Yet we have a deeply unhealthy society. We have terrible levels of air pollution on our streets and in our homes. We have a terrible quality of homes with poor insulation, people unable to afford to heat their homes, the problems of moulds that have been so, tra so tragically illustrated lately. To get a healthier society, to get a more productive society, to get the kind of growth that the government is so keen on, the best thing to do would be ensure that we have free prescriptions, we have free support for everyone who needs it, a help to everyone to contribute as best they can to our society not punitive sanctions waived at some of the most vulnerable people in our communities. 